We have with us Dr. Daniel Yargin, ahead of the Sera Week India Energy Forum in Delhi between 14 to 16 October. Dr. Yargin, you know, we have talked about the crude oil prices, but we continue to also talk about the alternate fuels. India has invested a lot in sonar, solar panels. Electrical vehicle as a subject is something that has seen investments in a lot of technologies moving around as well. Is that any competition to crude oil? Even as we've been talking about it for a couple of years now, have things really changed on the ground? It hasn't changed. Uh, the, the, the fuel mix hasn't changed. Uh, uh, I think EVs are going to be a growing part of the uh, automobile fleet. Uh, we did our big study we called Reinventing the Wheel about the future of uh, EVs, and we think that in a couple of decades, a quarter of the fleet on a global basis might well be electric vehicles, but it just it doesn't happen overnight. But we do see the Indian companies uh, focused on uh, EVs, and we're going to have CEOs of two of the companies that are leading on uh, electric vehicles speaking. Uh, but you need not only electric vehicles, the fleet doesn't change overnight. You also need to have reliable electricity supplies where people can recharge their vehicles. But I think in India, one of the big drivers is going to be air pollution uh, as a, as a, to shift the uh, automobile fleet, make it more efficient, make it cleaner, and to have a portion of it be uh, EVs. Hmm. And I, I think that's, and I think air quality is going to require uh, changes. <laughs> really, yes. You know, I want to keep the next two, three questions on India yet again. In the last couple of months, in India, essentially, we have seen fuel prices, petrol, diesel hit record highs almost every single day because of what the crude oil prices were doing and the rupee was doing as well. Now, with the excise duty cut, this being an election year as well, what direction do you think that the prices are headed into and how would you really compare it with what's happening in the global markets, really? It's always a difficult question for governments about what to do about pricing and taxing. Uh, and of course, India had moved away from controls. Uh, now it's caught in this vice between uh, the crude oil on the one side and uh, the weakening rupee on the other. And it inevitably uh, creates political volatility around that. Uh, and the question is kind of who who pays for it? Do the companies pay for it? Uh, does the government pay for it? Do consumers pay for it? And, uh, you know, we've seen these issues of sort of price controls and subsidies are a very tough uh, issue uh, for many countries. And right now, uh, India is, is, is caught in that uh, because of uh, the, you know, having these two factors at the same time and kind of this general problem of uh, for many emerging markets of weakening uh, weakening currencies, I know that when the this is something that again one recognizes that the you know the kind of key decision makers in world oil see that happening, and uh, they're concerned about it. Mm. So where do you see the dialogue moving in Sarah Week this time around? Because we are looking at all the major oil producers, oil ministers, upstream, downstream companies being part of this. What really is the direction and dialogue this time around that you're looking to focus on? There's a short term and the long term. There's the importance of the global markets to India and uh, India's importance to the global markets. So short term, I think there's going to be an incredible focus on what's going to happen to oil prices because you're going to have you know, the key people there. And this dialogue with India is going to be very important. I think longer term, uh, there's also the longer term discussion of ensuring that India has a solid energy basis to support high economic growth for decades to come. And so I think we're going to see a mixture of very topical, near term, urgent questions combined with very fundamental questions about energy's, India's energy future, which is really also India's economic future. Hmm. India, for the longest time, of course, has been uh, importing from uh, geographically viable places. But we've seen for the first time in last year the U.S. exports come into the country as well, and that jump has been quite sizable. We've also seen Saudi Arabia increase market share, also increase premium for the Asian consumers. What is your sense, the kind of mix India is looking at in terms of quality, pricing, and imports? For India, uh, part of energy security is diversification. And so that means supplies both from the Persian Gulf countries uh, and also from new suppliers. 
And I think, um, I was just writing about this in, in the draft of my new book, I think that this energy trade between India and the United States, which never existed before, is significant in economic terms, in energy security terms, and I also think it's significant uh, in political terms by creating a new dimension to the relationship between the two countries. And I think it's something that really contributes to the overall relationship. And so, you know, a few years ago you would have said, it's impossible, can't imagine India importing oil or natural gas from the United States, but it's happening and I think it's a good thing for both countries. <laughs> All right. So going forward from here, what do you think will impact the crude oil prices? I understand the fundamentals have been strong, but so have been the speculative positions. There is so much money that is rotating out of WTI crude into Brent and the kind of gap that we've seen between both the crude varieties. Is it going to be weather? Is it going to be politics, geopolitics, financials? What's your sense on where are we moving from where we stand right now? When you talk about the future of oil prices, you're talking about markets, you're talking about politics, you're talking about, uh, uh, you're talking about uh, investment, you're talking about technology. So all of those things come together. But I think uh, one key development, you point to the gap between WTI and Brent, is the U.S. is bottlenecked right now. Its production capacity uh, amazingly has outrun its pipeline capacity to move oil from the oil fields uh, to the refineries uh, to coastal shipping points. And I think if we see over the course of this year the bottlenecks uh, in the United States fixed, that will have global impact on the market. Also, when I was just in Russia, there's a sense that Russia is going to be able to bring on significant new supplies uh, next year, and that will be a contributor to the market. So uh, those, you know, I think that's what you should look for. But uh, these kind of things don't happen overnight. But fixing those bottlenecks in the logistical system are very important. And, of course, we will see how far down uh, Iranian exports go, uh, what ways Iran finds to get its oil out, not officially, uh, and uh, what kind of waivers. That's all, that's all going to play out really over the next several weeks. So as you said before, this is going to be a very eventful couple of months, a uh, key, key moment uh, in, uh, in the history of world oil. Okay. Uh, you know, but oh, while, of course, there are going to be a lot of factors, what's your sense on demand? We continue to talk on how Asia perhaps has the biggest demand, whatever increase in percentage of demand in the international markets. We've seen a, a considerable marginal incremental increase from that will come from India and China. Do you see that kind of growth continuing uh, with the kind of cues or, or the global trade concerns that we are living with right now? Yes, I think that Asia uh, is is the growth region. You, you know, the U.S. Uh, imports uh, from the Middle East, one's very large or very small. I think you see the uh, exporters uh, refocused on Asia. You've seen the investments in the downstream in India, which is a very big signal as to where they think the future will be. And so I think we're going to see basically uh, uh, all the international growth is going to come from Asia. Uh, and... Uh, China and India loom very large. Uh, India imports 85 percent of its oil. China imports 75 percent of its oil. So as you have rising incomes, you're going to have increasing demand for oil, even as countries seek alternatives, even as they become more efficient. And so uh, there's been a big reorientation of exporters uh, to Asia. In fact, the most fast, one of the most fascinating parts of this is the big growth market for U.S. exports is Asia as well. Well, absolutely, Dr. Yogin. And I, I, there is so much to take away from this conversation on demand, supply, investments, global events. And remember, Sarah Week brings you these three days of dialogue in India, in New Delhi. And that's exactly what we will see focus India as being the most important thing. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for answering all the questions on crude in the international markets and on India as well. With that, thank you so much for watching the show.